Hello viewers, four DIYers here, back from the store video for everyone. Now in this particular video here, I'll be doing a demonstration on how to troubleshoot your power steering system on your vehicle. Now this particular vehicle I'm working with here today is a 2003 Dodge Dakota. Now the power steering system is a hydraulic system, which is intended to assist the steering movement when you are turning the steering wheel on your vehicle. And what this does is allow for an easier movement. Now there is vehicles also found with a manual steering system as well, which doesn't include this hydraulic system but it can be very rare found in today's automotive market. Looking down on this particular model here, as you can see, we do have the reservoir located at the top here. Now, depending on the location, will depend on your vehicle's manufacturer. A lot of times you can refer to your owner's manual for those locations. Now, below that, we'll have a pump. As you can see, we do have a serpentine belt that goes around, and the pump does have a pulley on it as well. Now, the same belt does wrap around there. Basically, what happens when your engine is running, that pulley will turn, which in turn turns the pump and then it'll pump fluid throughout the system. The system does consist of two different types of lines. One will be a high pressure line, which does supply the fluid throughout the system. The other one will be a low pressure line or a return line. So basically when the fluid is done being pumped through the system, it then returns back into the reservoir. Now, one of the more common issues found with the power steering system here is you'll find that it can be low of fluid. Therefore, you'll have the vehicle acting up. Now this can cause some hardness in the steering when you are moving the steering wheel or you will find that the pump will be just basically making a cavitating noise or a whining noise. Now I'll just show you what that does sound like in a moment. Now you can simply just go ahead and top the fluid up and obviously for the type of fluid that is required to be used, you do have to refer to your vehicle's manufacturer specifications in order to add the correct fluid. Another issue which can be is you can have dirty fluid. Now obviously there is a maintenance in interval in this just like any other parts of your engine. Now the maintenance intervals in order to replace this fluid is 30,000 miles or 50,000 kilometers. Now what can happen over time, considering it does continuously be heat up and you will have some dirt and debris get prominent in the system. Now that obviously does need to be changed, otherwise it loses the qualities of the hydraulic fluid. Now another issue which can also be somewhat common is with the serpentine belt here. And you can see we do have some glazing on the top side as well, but you can see on the bottom side here that you can check the belt for any cracking or slippage or even just check for the tension in the belt as well. Now, some vehicles do come with an automatic tensioner. Other ones you do have to tension manually. Now, this obviously does depend on the making model of vehicle you do have. Now, as you can see with this vehicle here, it's also equipped with a serpentine belt. Now, there is other vehicles out there, especially with the older ones, that they will be using a V-belt as well. Now, if it does need to be tightened, then you can go ahead and take the proper steps to tighten the belt. Now, if it does need to be replaced, then you go ahead and replace the belt, whichever one is required for your vehicle. Now, as for the main parts of the system here, now a couple which I mentioned before were the power steering pump and the uh, lines. Now, obviously, with the power steering pump here, we do have a reservoir that's built on top. Sometimes you'll have a separate reservoir. Other times you'll have this reservoir built right onto the pump. Now, as for the lines, high and low pressure lines. Next, moving on, we'll have an oil cooler. Now, not all systems have an oil cooler. Now, this particular system on this truck does have one because what happens over time is when the pump is running, it will create heat, and obviously you need to uh, distribute that heat away from the system. Then finally, we'll have the steering rack or steering box. Now, obviously, it does depend on vehicle design of which one your vehicle does have. Now, obviously, all these parts can fail throughout the system, and you will notice a lot of different things. Now, if you are noticing that you are low on fluid, obviously, there can be a leak in the system, which you should find. It may be a minor leak. It may be more of a severe leak. Now, this could be the pump's leaking. Maybe the main seal in the front of it's leaking or where the lines are. These hydraulic lines can leak as well. They do wear out over time because they are made of a rubber. They do have seals where they bolt up into place as well. And you can also find your steering rack leaking as well. Now, if you do refer to an older video I did in the past uh, with replacing the steering rack on my Volkswagen, now the steering rack in that vehicle failed because the seals where the tie rods go in obviously were worn out over time. What happens is the tie rod shafts, they do get pitted over time and start to rust. That wears out the seals and then the fluid starts to leak out. Now, another common issue which can happen here is especially with this vehicle here, this is a, somewhat of a common problem found on the Dodge trucks, is with the cap here, you'll have a, a vent built into the cap. So what happens over time is that when the system is running, your fluid will obviously heat up and expand. And therefore, you do have an air cavity in there. And that air cavity does need to be released in order to make room for that extra fluid. And that vent does get plugged up over time. Now, obviously, this can cause leakage throughout the system. Now, it does depend where it is going to leak because it's building up a, somewhat of an excess pressure. And that 
pressure has to go somewhere so it goes for the next weakest point what you can do is you can either go ahead and clean the cap or you can go ahead and purchase a new one other issues throughout the system if you do find that your steering rack is acting up as i mentioned before the system can leak in various spots so you will have to get underneath the vehicle look at the steering rack look at any of the lines sometimes you can inspect them from the top you want to look for any buildup of residue there a lot of times what it does help to do if you're kind of skeptical if there's quite a bit of oil there you can go ahead and wash your engine down you know clean up any of that excess residue and then again expect for leaks the internals can also fail inside that steering rack or steering box and you will notice that maybe the steering will turn one way harder than opposed to the other way or another thing which can also happen is that you'll somewhat feel of a crunching noise in your steering or maybe if you go underneath the vehicle when it's on a hoist turn the wheel back and forth and maybe you can listen with a stethoscope and listen for the internal crunching of the gears obviously they do wear out over time now other issues if your pump isn't pumping a sufficient amount of fluid maybe the fluid's dirty there's another issue which can also happen is that some of these systems are equipped with a filter the filter does get plugged up which starves the pump of fluid or even maybe your fluid is just low what can happen here is that maybe your steering will be hard turning or that the pump will start cavitating or making somewhat of a whining sound. Now another issue which can also happen is a faulty dump valve. Now what the dump valve does is it allows the system to build up with pressure. Obviously this can fail over time. Normally what does happen, the most common problem is that it gets stuck open and therefore don't allow the system to build up with pressure. We can also have an issue with the pump assembly itself. Now obviously it does have internal parts and what can happen is especially with the veins they do wear out over time now obviously this can be tested by installing an inline pressure gauge now normally with the pressure gauge we do have to disconnect the power steering line install this into the system allow the system to run and we'll monitor the gauge to see what the system does build up with pressure now a normal spec we're looking for this is just the general spec would be about 1200 psi but obviously this is dependent on the manufacturer as you can see obviously you've been having a little bit of issue with this truck here so went ahead and purchased a new cap and you can see there is a spring on the inside here so obviously when that pressure does build up what happens is this cap lifts up from where it's snapped into the location on the reservoir tank and allows that pressure to be removed as you can see here we do have a hot fill point and this is the dipstick on there and then moving around to the opposite side we do have a cold fill point as well so this concludes the rest of my tutorial video if you have any comments or questions please don't hesitate to post them below also please subscribe to my channel and like my video thank you for watching